So I'm Esther Lafferty. I'm Festival Director and with Joe Salmon. Joe, double-handed wave so everyone can scroll through and find you. Um, and, and lots of wonderful volunteers. We run Art Weeks. And it's lovely to see you all here. Lots of new faces, a couple of faces and names I recognise as well. Um, and we've got about, say, about an hour. So I'm going to rattle through the key points um, and then you can ask any questions. Or if you like, you can pop them in the chat box as we go along and Joe will try and answer them. Um, if for any reason we don't have a chance to answer your question, then we will try and cover everything. Uh, you can always email us by the Art Weeks website and we can carry on from there or give us a call or something like that. So firstly, Art Weeks is a not-for-profit organisation. So we're not here to make money out of you. Um, and we have two main aims. The first is to help both emerging and established artists in Oxfordshire or um, anyone with a um, a what with an Oxfordshire link um, to show your work to a wider audience than you would reach otherwise. So within that's within an established and well-recognised event at a relatively low cost. And our second aim is to stimulate interest and involvement in art among the Oxfordshire population and to promote the idea of buying art and craft directly from the maker in a friendly and informal way. So what do we do? And I'm sure you know this. We primarily fulfil these aims by presenting an Oxfordshire Art Weeks Festival, which takes place over three and a half weeks each May. Um, as well as the festival guide, which I'm sure you've all seen. Everybody seen it? Hands up to confess if you haven't. OK, um, so the festival guide is about 120 pages, full colour, quite glossy, very compact. Um, we produce... 50,000 copies of the festival guide. We produce posters, bunting, flags, banners, and we run a press campaign in the run-up to the festival with magazine and newspaper articles and a comprehensive website. So we're trying to get the whole, everybody who lives in Oxfordshire to know that this is happening. And if they want to be part of it, you know, come and, come and visit some, some art, see some art. So people pick up that guide, they browse the website, they choose where they want to go, and the promotional campaign generates an estimated about 100,000 visits into venues. So that's 100,000 pairs of feet into all the venues across the, across the county. Um, so when is the next Art Weeks Festival? Next year, it's from May the 3rd to the 26th. Now, the festival is May, but to be part of it, and to give us a chance to gather all the details together into that festival guide and get it printed, we need your details by the end of the year. It's a pretty mammoth task to produce that guide and do all the other stuff around it. So that's why we're asking you to submit those venue details by a hard deadline of the 31st of December. You probably don't want them to get all mixed up in Christmas and New Year. So you can do them, you could start doing it today. But the website is now ready to accept submissions from I think today, or maybe it was yesterday. So you can do it much earlier than that, but that's the deadline, 31st of December. Now, during the festival, each week has a different geographic focus. So although you can choose to show your work for the full three weeks, we strongly recommend that you align with the dates for your region. These rotate so the no area always has the same week. So it's not always, for example, Oxford City in the first week. We rotate. In 2025, the first week is Oxford City and it runs from Saturday the 3rd till Sunday the 11th. South and Vale is the following week. That's 10th of May, Saturday the 10th to Sunday the 11th. No, Sunday the 18th, sorry. S Saturday the 10th to Sunday the 18th. And the third week, North and West Oxfordshire, is the final week from the 17th of May to the 26th of May. Now, we're saying week, but these are quite long weeks if you count them because they're nine days because we actually are including a weekend on either end. And the third week, North and West Oxfordshire, is 10 days because it has two weekends and then the bank holiday Monday, the late May bank holiday Monday. So if you want to take part every day of your week, that's the dates for you, know, for you to work with them. So are you eligible to take part? 
well we we like to think we're a friendly organization and we we you know we don't we're not selective we um so to be part of art weeks you should live or work in oxfordshire or be part of an oxfordshire based group now if you have another strong link that doesn't quite fit with this, then get in touch and see if you qualify, because we tend to take quite a pragmatic approach. But what we don't want is people from Scotland and the Scilly Islands flooding in um, to make use of what's a facility for Oxfordshire artists primarily. So we're non-selective. There's no judging panel. Um, so as long as you're that Oxfordshire based art artist, then you can take part. And we're a broad umbrella. So we include every kind of art from furniture making to fashion, jewellery, wood turning, traditional painting and pottery or videos, installation. We've had AI art this year. So, you know, there's no rules about what, what we'll include. No rules about the type of work. So that really is up to you. Bar a couple of exceptions, which are mainly charities and schools and non-selling shows, you do have to be an Art Weeks member to exhibit as part of the festival. That's £27.50, which gets you all the Art Weeks newsletters, the Art Weeks support we offer, and an online portfolio on the website, and other opportunities that come through the, web, through the newsletters. Um, don't worry, it's an annual fee rather than a subscription, so you're only signing up for one calendar year. Um, so you can take a year out, come back the next year, or not as you choose, come back in two years' time, come back in three years' time, whatever suits you. Um, a key thing to note, though, is that being a member doesn't get you a place in a venue or a listing in the festival guide. So it's just step one. It's kind of saying, hello, I'm here. I want to be part of your of the organisation. Um, you know, I want to know all about what's going on. And, you know, and, and I'm planning on exhibiting. The next step is finding or choosing a place to exhibit. Um, and this can be a bit more thorny for people. So what Artworks does is it provides this promotional framework, but we don't organise the venues and the logistics of all those Art Weeks exhibition events. The open studios and the group shows that you see across the county during the festival are individually organised by the artist or the artists taking part in each. So they can be very different. Different venues, spaces, and types of exhibitions suit different people. And you're all different and every artist's art is different. So Art Weeks originated with that idea of open studios where the public are invited into working spaces to see the creative process in action. Um, and we love that we still have lots of open studios, probably about a third of our venues are open studios. Um, but now lots of people borrow or hire space will cluster together in groups. And there's no right or wrong. It's about what suits you and it's up to you to make that decision. So our members have very different reasons for why they're exhibiting. Some people are just they're just simply passionate about the process they use and they want to meet like minded like minded artists, share their ideas, inspire other people to get involved with the medium they use. Um, other people are looking to dip their toe in the water of being a selling artist. That's a very popular reason for people to get involved. Um, many of the professional artists taking part during Art Weeks, who take part year in, year out, they took their first step into an art or craft career in this way. And Art Weeks is also an opportunity just to build confidence, to build your artist's name, to get feedback on your work directly, to make contacts, gain new followers online, and gain people for your mailing lists. Some people are looking for, some, some of our members are looking for commissions, so they don't know whether they've had a good art weeks or not, if you like, until the following year, and they know what happened over the space of, the, of, of that calendar year. Um, some people run workshops, run, run teaching sessions, run art classes, and they want people to have a, ch a chance to come and chat to them, see if they like them, and see if they want to join their classes. And of course, lots of people are hoping to sell work on the spot and make some money. Um, but as about 10% of our shows are non-selling, that's not always the, the driving force for, for people. Um, just So if this, this is sounding right to you, you find thinking that you fit somewhere in, in some of these categories, um, then the next thing I suggest you think about 
is what you'd like to get out of Art Weeks. Um, because this could or should influence your choice of venue. Um, hands up if you haven't got a venue in mind. Actually, hands up if you have got a venue in mind. Actually, that's not bad. Usually we find that quite well at a session like this, probably 70% of people are hoping that we're going to be able to miracle a, a possible venue out of a glass of water um, in, in this half hour. So that's quite good. OK, even so, if you've got a venue, you know, think about what it's going to offer you. So you're looking, you're going to need to find and organise a venue for Art Weeks that suits your ethos. So where should you exhibit? Well, you might find it convenient to open your home or studio. Easy. Well, relatively, you'll have to tidy up. Um, you might prefer to exhibit away from home. You might like to have a solo show or be part of a group show. And here's one that you might not have thought about. Do you want to maximise the number of people who see your work? Or would you rather have a dozen really involved conversations with engaged visitors who've chosen to come and see you specifically and are more likely to buy something sizable? Or would you choose a middle ground? So we know that lots of artists don't have a space they can open to the public. So about two thirds of Art Week's members choose to exhibit away from their own home or studio. Um, we do offer help where we can and ideas. Um, and we have an online map and perhaps Joe will pop the link into the chat. Um, but our online map is at www.artweeks.org forward slash artists slash find hyphen a hyphen venue. Are you popping it? Is, can you pop that in chat, Joe? Let me see. I'll go through. I'll do it one more time. www.artweeks.org slash artists slash find hyphen a hyphen venue. And that can be a good starting point. Now, so here are some things to think about. Thanks, Joe. Um, think about when you're choosing a venue. Where would you like your venue to be geographically and how far are you prepared to travel to it? And then linked to this, would you want to be there all of the time, some of the time or not at all? And that's up to you. Um, we do have some people who exhibit from home, but they they turn their garage into an exhibition space and they skulk in the house because they're not really people people. Um Whereas there are other people who will hire a space and they'll be in it all of the time. So, you know, there's no there's no right and wrong. There's no magic formula. But there's no question that members sell more work and have a more engaging Art Weeks experience if they are at the venue to chat to visitors. But we know that this isn't possible always and it doesn't suit everyone. Now, it's important to realise, I think, you know, right up front, that isolated rural venues are likely to be quieter than um, a big group venue in the centre of Oxford. Um, and those isolated rural venues are likely to be pretty quiet in the week. Now, if you're simply committing to opening your studio and you can just get on with your work in the way that you normally would, and if somebody comes by, brilliant, and if they don't, it's not the end of the world, it perhaps doesn't matter. But that might matter more if you're away from home. So if you're going to be in a, a sort of off, more offbeat venue all week, is there something else useful you could do from there if visitors are thin on the ground, it's pouring down with rain and, and you know, it's, it's a cold, rainy Monday. Hopefully it'll be sunny all week. We have asked, but we can't guarantee it. Now, Art Week's venues, as I'm sure you know, include houses, garden studios, garages, cafes, churches. Um, many cafes and churches will offer their wall space for free. Um, we also see village halls and hired spaces. The venues include big, small, straightforward, and downright quirky. So we have one lady who exhibits in a phone box outside her home. She's a ceramicist. She's not painting giant canvases. But, you know, it. it's quirky. It, it works for her. Um, so think about what might work for your art. And don't be scared to think outside the box. Would a kitchen or a car show, showroom work for your art? Or a leisure centre foyer? Or does your employer have a meeting room that they'd let you use? So if you're thinking of this kind of thing, then tell the 
um, hosting organisation, the person you're suggesting it to, about how they'll benefit from being an Art Week's venue. So they'll have their address in the festival guide and they'll get new visitors coming to join the week saying, oh, I didn't know there was an architect's practice here or, or whatever it is. Um, and they'll also have a fresh PR angle for them to promote themselves. So they can then send out an, an email to all of their clients, you know, the financial advisors or the lawyers. They send out an email to all their clients saying, we're not only interested in your money. Look, we're actually real people and we like art too. And come and see what we've got this week. So it can really work for them too. And that can be brilliant for you if then their clients will come and see your work too. So do think outside the box. Um, but what you do need from any venue that says, yeah, we'll do your Art Weeks exhibition is make sure you've got appropriate space and enthusiasm. Because if you have to um, yeah, twist their arm to say yes in the first place, they're probably going to be less helpful, closer than a, than a venue who's dying to have you. So just bear that in mind. Consider the space, the access and the parking, the light. I mean, these are obvious things, but it's easy to forget them. The hanging arrangements, possibly plug sockets if you think you're going to need something plugged in and the security of your work if you're not planning to be there or if you're only going to be there some of the time and maybe there'll be people passing through at other times. Um, so those are, those are things to think about. And think about too about what kind of visitors the venue you choose offers. Venues in bigger towns usually get more visitors, especially if they're in a cluster of venues. You'll get people going to do a day trip down Whitney High Street, and we hear that Whitney's going to be a bit of a hotspot next year when it hasn't been for the last couple of years. Um, or uh, So you'll benefit from passing football in those places. But if you live in that remote spot right on the edge of the county, people are going to have to travel to see you. But you know they've made the effort and you know they're properly interested. Churches tend to be a really supportive community, and so all of their all of their community will probably come by. Um, and cafes have lots of people come through who'll see your work, but they perhaps have less intention of buying. So those are sort of venue thoughts. Now think about whether you'd like to hold a solo exhibition or be part of a group exhibition. Would you think about putting together a group? or join a group that's perhaps already established. Now, a group offers support, brilliant support, um, emotionally and logistically, and you'll almost certainly get a larger footfall. But being part of a group doesn't suit everyone, and it can be stressful if your ideas on how things should be done don't align with those of the organiser or the other people in the group. And just as everybody has their own character and their own personality, and every artist has their own ethos, Every group has its own kind of feeling and flavor and character. So just make sure that you're, you know, you're kind of neatly aligned with a group um, if you're choosing to be part of a group. Or, you know, I'd recommend thinking about gathering together a few arty friends to exhibit. And that's, if you haven't got local arty friends, that's where our online map can be really useful because you can see if there are people near to you, to where you live, who are also looking, get in touch and say, OK, there's three or four of us in this village. Shall we see if together we can do something at the parish council office or, you know, something like that? So do use the map for that kind of purpose. Um, and it could be a village hall. It could be that you have a meeting room in a high street estate agents. Be innovative. Um, and you could contact any groups that are local to you. Have a look in last year's festival guide, which is on the website. Um, so you might have to dig a little to find it. Um, and see if they have any additional space because some groups they have quite rigid set of people and they don't have much space but other groups are, are able to welcome new people much more easily so that's that's a possibility too now just some stats I'm usually asked for some stats on oh well how many people will come and visit me and the answer really I'm afraid is as long as a piece of string but what I can tell you from our feedback from members after the event is that the average number of visitors at a venue is usually about 200. And the daily average footfall across all of our venues last year was 46. But it really isn't a very useful statistics because the venues are so different. Some of them are open from nine to six. Some of them are open 
not many, fortunately, you know, 11 to one, one of the venues last year. Some of them have, um, you know, some of them are open for a week. Some of them are open for two days. It's so, so they don't really compare. A big group venue will probably be see between will probably see between 500 and 1,000 visitors, where small single artist venues are much quieter, perhaps 100, 120 over the week. But if you think about it, and they all chat for half an hour, and it's you on your own in your studio, that's a lot of hours. Um, so again, it, this is kind of coming back to what sort of venue do I is going to work for me? Do I, do I want to be in? Do I want to be? And so will it work for you? Well, I hope it will. I mean, for the vast majority of people, Art Weeks does work for them. It is something that you can do for a year and then you build it over time and be, and kind of build a reputation. Um, you know, sometimes people will have a quiet year. People who've been doing it 20 years will have a quiet year for no obvious reason and the next year will be really busy. Um, so it is something that if you decide you're going to do it, it's quite possibly worth thinking you're going to do it for longer than a year. Um but for most people, most of our artists come back the next year. Um, so we talked about what you'd like to get out of your Art Weeks exhibition and what kind of an exhibition you could consider and things to think about as you decide you know, where you might have it, whether to have it at home. What we haven't talked about yet is the cost. And there's a rather complicated pricing structure, which is all laid out on the website in the For Artists section under Exhibition Options but I'll try and talk you through it now, just very quickly. So first you need to register to be an Art Weeks member. Um, now I say first, but actually I would wait until you've got your venue sorted and then register, because what you don't want to do is register to be a menu member and then you just can't find a venue and it all falls apart. But when you're ready to go, first you need to register to be an Art Weeks member for the year, the calendar year, 2025, which costs 27 pounds 50. All exhibitors need to be members and all members are expected to exhibit during May. Now, if you are thinking about a non-selling group or a kind of amateur artists group like a kind of Wallingford Art Society, then you can get in touch with us separately because it's slightly different. But pretty much rule of thumb, all exhibitors should be members, all members should exhibit. And then you can choose how to sign up to appear in the festival guide. So you can either sign up for a solo artist exhibition, your name, your picture, a little bit of text about you in the festival guide. Or you can be part of a pair, two names, shared picture, a little bit of text, or, or a trio. Oh, thank you, Joe. A trio, three names, little picture, little bit of text. Or a large group, large group name, picture, text. Sorry. <laughs> so... If you're part of a large group, your exhibition coordinator will do this for you. If you're part of a pair or a trio, only one of you needs to sign up for that exhibition. Now, signing up as a solo artist, so that's if it's just you in your studio, just you in a venue, is £120. So your total fee is £147.50, including membership. Now, that might sound quite a lot if this is a first year, um, but you're basically getting an advert Hold it up again, Joe, for me. You're getting an advert, a little advert, in a copy of a art magazine that's going to every interested art enthusiast in Oxfordshire and beyond. If you're exhibiting from home, then that's probably your main cost. But if you're considering hiring space um, and paying for framing and hosting a PV, then this could be just a fraction of your overall cost. So do think as well about what else you're going to need to pay for. If you do do wall art and you hadn't kind of at this point clocked that framing costs a huge amount of money, then do think about whether there's a way of, you know, maybe you'll just have things mounted. Maybe you'll just present things on paper. So, but do bear in mind that there will be other costs too. Um, now, um, so what I haven't said and what I haven't got on my crib sheet is the cost for pairs and threes. I think the cost for a pair, do you know, off? have you got that there, Joe? 
I'll tell you what, I'll ask Joe, Joe can pop that in chat, which will be brilliant. If you're taking part in a large group, the group fee for everybody, so everybody's a member, and then there's a group fee of £299, and that's I, split. I think everybody that is here should have had that as an attachment. So hopefully you've all got that as an attachment on the email I sent you. See, we're super efficient, as well as being friendly. Thanks, Joe. So, um, so, um, so what you know, whether it's worth it to you is going to depend on what you're hoping to get out of the exhibition and how much you expect to sell and at what price, for example. Now, solo artists, and again, we're back to that same long, short, long piece of string. Solo artists tend to sell um, over a thousand pounds worth of art. I mean, some artists obviously are better than others. They're more established than others. They've got more work for people to choose from. If you're just in a studio painting a portrait with a few examples and you want commissions, then you're not going to sell very much, but it could still be a really, really super useful week for you. But just as a rule of thumb, solo artists tend to sell about a thousand pounds worth of art, maybe 1200. There will be a handful who sell very little. Could be that their art just isn't appealing to the people who've come through the door. Um, it could be that it's overpriced. It could just be super, super bad luck. You know, we don't all, we don't know some of the time. And there'll be another bunch who'll sell, sell more than 10K or they'll be booking their holiday to Bermuda um, with the proceeds. So it, it really is very, very variable, just as, you know, you guys are all very, very variable and so will the venues be. The average for exhibitors in large groups is probably more like 650 750 800 but again it's very variable there will be some artists in large groups who make an awful lot more money than that and there'll be some people who only sell a few bits and pieces so it's very very variable and so i said about as part of a group you'll split the group fee so you'll be paying less than a solo artist um per head um but you'll have and you'll have more visitors almost certainly but you're likely to sell less per head within the group. Um, so, but crucially within a group, you won't have your name and image in the listing, in the guide. You'll be part of a group entry in the festival guide with your name in the index, probably. If you're new to this, you may be really very happy just to be taking part in quite a small way, being part of a group listing um, and your name's in the index and that's great. People can find you, you know, you don't want to be out there too much in year one. Sometimes I get in touch with someone and say, your work looks great. Let's do a newspaper article on you. And they say, oh, no, this is my first year. I'm much too shy for a newspaper article. Please cover somebody else. So, you know, it depends what you're trying to what you're trying to do. But if building your profile is key, if that's really part of what you're trying to do, um, then you could consider having that solo artist listing, a kind of individual entry in the festival guide, whether you're exhibiting alone, well, you'd have to if you're exhibiting alone, but even in a group, you could take that out too. And um, it costs more because you're then kind of doubling up because you're in a group and then you take your own listing in the festival guide, you take your own you know, advert, your own profile, um, but you're giving yourself the very best boost you can. Now, I think I would say that that works best for people who know their, their art is strong, well, they, they're confident that their art is strong and they believe that somebody is going to drive from Reading to Banbury to have a look at it or vice versa. Um, because you've got your look, you've got your image, perhaps you've been an artist in a different area and this is the first time you're coming to Oxfordshire. Um, that, you know, the people sort of at the top of the game to, should definitely do that. If you're new, a bit unsure, no idea how it's going to work, then I, I wouldn't worry about that. Um, and so... I think that probably is kind of my whistle stop tour. Um, is everybody confused? It is all on the website. So do a couple of the things that I'll add just very quickly um, is we can have more than one listing at any venue. Yes. So we do on occasions have somebody that say we have 12 artists in a village hall that all do solo listings. So we would have 12 solo listings with that same address um just so that then you get two that... pages in the festival guide so that's a brilliant boost for a single venue so um the other thing is all exhibitions need to be free to enter um but if you wish to sell teas and coffees or if you're at a church or somewhere like that 
that they would like the church would like to use it as a fundraiser as a good incentive to have you there um they can sell teas and coffees and lunches um to make as a fundraiser so that's also a option of something that can be done um i've got three venues that have literally only come in this week so can i just whip yep. through some of my extra tips and then go on to venues is that okay yeah yeah of course cool so exhibition options um that's a really good point that joe said about you, if you're a group of three you don't have to be a trio you can be three solos or a group can be lots um so before we move on to my tips and pointers I'd like to just stress that real critical importance of choosing a strong image for the festival guide. It is the key thing that attracts potential visitors. Sometimes people leave it to the last minute and we think, really, which way up does it go? What is it? They're not doing, you know, they're not doing their best job. Now, actually, if you send in a picture like that, you've accidentally sent in a picture of your, your slippers or something, then we'll probably get back to you and say, was it really your left foot that you meant to be including? But, do think about that picture really carefully. Get it right, and you could have two or three people on day one saying, I've come for the picture in the festival guide, come for the piece in the picture in the festival guide. And so browse the pages of last year's guide and have a look about what you think works best. When you're choosing on your computer or your phone, it will be backlit. So print it off and see what it looks like when it's not backlit. And don't print it at full size. Print it at, you know, kind of four centimetres square. Or print a few options and ask around, get people to help you choose. Um, because that is, you know, getting that right can make a big difference. Um, my other kind of tips and pointers are because we're not prescriptive, we ask that you try and um, be open from 11 till 6, if you can, every day. And be there if you can. Now, lots of open studios are quite insistent that you stick to core hours and you do this. We don't do that because we're trying to be helpful. Um, but if you can, please do. Deviating from it will lose you visitors because although you get more people come at the weekends, often they're the more day, they're the day trippers. You sometimes find you get the more serious visitors in the week. Um, so, you know, the people who've the people who are doing the traveling, they're having an art day out um, rather than just a sort of weekend jaunt. Uh, some people like to open late on Thursdays and Fridays, which, you know, we, yeah, that's great. Um, but try and give people that biggest window of opportunity to come and see you. If you only open from 11 till 1 on weekdays, there might be a lot of people who'd have liked to come and see you and just can't. But whatever you choose, keep it simple because we have the standard hours for the kind in the festival guide if you are oh i'm 9 30 till 3 30 on a monday and i'm one till four on a tuesday and it gets really confusing you get confused we get confused and the visitors turn up when you're shut so you know visitors do make mistakes so just try and keep it as simple as you can and then once you signed up, what happens then? Well, in the run up to the festival, we offer guidance on getting the most out of your exhibition. Um, a bit like this, but with more focused things on using art weeks and how to do things, you know, and planning your exhibition. And um, we've got a monthly newsletters, an artist handbook. Um, and we also um, we provide now these are for sale. They're at cost price, bunting and Art Week's flags so that you can signpost your venues clearly. You don't have to use the ones we provide. Um, they're well recognised. Most people do. But if you want to knit your own or carve something, balloons, you know, that's that's fine, too. Um and then how Art Weeks works for you will depend on lots of factors from your art, your venue, and also how you engage with the Art Weeks community. Now, we are a network, a family of 900 members. And the more you put in, the more you engage with Joe and me, the more you engage with the other artists locally, get in touch with them and, and kind of get involved, the more you'll get out of it. You really will. Um, the more you keep us informed about what you're doing, what you're making, the more that we can help you. Um, so so I think now um, Joe and I will take questions. Joe's just got some venue bits and bobs, I think she's going to add. We'll take some questions and um, yeah, there. take it from there really. Um, okay, I've just got a few um, venues that literally come through this week. So they're not on the map yet. So they will hopefully be in the next week because I need to get um, these people to put their div 
various information in for you so that you can have it. Um, one is a care home near Buscot, which is in the south of the county, nearer Dorchester than Abingdon, but on that road. Um, I've got a reception area within a business in the centre of Whitney, which would be for small hanging art. Um, and we've also got a church in Middleton Stoney, which is near the Hayfords. It's sort of west of Bicester. Um, that are offering um, themselves as a venue as well. So as soon as I can get that information from them and get them to register on the map, we'll get those there. Um, obviously, if you have space for um, additional artists with you and you'd like to put that on the map as well, that would be great. Um, and if you hear of anything venue-wise locally to you, that would also be good to, to hear about. You can also um, email us and let us know, you know, a little bit more about you and send either a link to your website or a few images so that we've got an idea. But what we are not able to do is match make everybody together with venues and people. So that's why we say, look, here's a map. Here's everybody who's looking. You know, you kind of do some investigating because we don't know what art you might like to be with or what kind of venue you want. Or, But it doesn't do any harm to kind of give us a little bit more information um, than on the map if you think that's useful. But the best thing is to try and get in touch with people yourselves, I think. I've put the... Uh, Can I just ask a question? Yes, of course. Uh, this is Carterton Library. Uh, we want to be a venue. That's what I wanted to ask you about. So how do we go about that? Well, you put yourself on the map as oh, we'd like to be a venue. And you... Uh, is anybody here in Whitney or Carterton? Carterton kind of patch. If we know... I mean, actually, we do usually have more people looking for venues then we have venues offering space at least at this stage so if we know then we will um we'll kind of push people in your direction that seem yeah. seem appropriate um but being on the find a venue map so it's the same map um which if, is if you link. if you register yourself with the website which will give yeah. you an account i think, I think then... you already will be because you have been before haven't you yeah, yeah. Well, and then yeah. sign up on that and then that hopefully people will come to you um, if I hear of anybody, I'll push them in your direction as well. Okay, thank you. Is it wall hanging art or? Uh, well, we've got some display boards. We, yeah, we've got some display boards. Elsa's okay. on the shelves and, they, and in the windows. Okay, cool. Have you got That's an lovely. idea of what sort of work you'd actually like to show? Because I know that quite a few libraries have photography and that's local photography. Group yeah, we, so we have a photography group. So that hopefully we'll get them involved. Yeah. Um, Okay. As long as it's not too big, <laughs> you know, I mean, not furniture, but anything else we can fit in, you know, jewelry, everything like that. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. B, in fact, the mix would be better. Okay. Hi there. Um, I'm just sounding this out because um, we have a church in in Bloxham with a lovely big space, and we're just thinking about the potential for having an art weeks exhibition there, and I'm I'm toying with the idea of. Um, inviting local schools to be part of it. I just can't imagine getting 45 kids to pay membership. Oh, no, um, you wouldn't need to. So <laughs> when we said, you know, anybody who's kind of selling their art, you you need to be a member um, to make a kind of contribution back into the whole Art Weeks organisation. Um, schools would take out an organisational membership. So the whole school takes out and a charity is the same if it's non-selling work if it's a non-selling exhibition then the school would have one organizational membership or a charity or a church group if it's non-selling um that would be the way to do it so you could either say right block some church group non-selling everything in the churches is, is for people to just simply look at and then you only need one ex you only need one membership for that one organizational membership for that um and then one listing. And then or, yeah, and then one exhibition entry. Or you could do and have an organisational membership for the school children. And if you want selling ones as well, you could either do that as a large group or lots of solos or any combination. But if you if you get confused, B, just send me an email and we can chat through it. It's not yeah, This is where it gets a bit confusing when you think, well, we've got those five people who want to sell their work and then we've got this school. And so we'll try and do a kind of mix and match approach. 
Thank you. That's super. Anyone else with a question? You can just unmute and ask it or raise yeah. it. Hi. Um, we're, we're a group of um, amateurs and there's 11 of us. Does that mean that all 11 of us have got paid this £27.50? It, it, it does. Uh, unless... And the unless here, are you a, like a Wallingford amateur art group kind of, or Abingdon art group, one of those kinds of no. art groups? Well, no, we're not exactly an art group. We're just um, just a group of amateur sewers, and we all just, dis, um, so, mix, yeah. you know, we just literally decide, thought that it'd be nice for this to group to get together and um, because there's not enough textile, the type of textiles we do in art week um, showing, so we thought perhaps we'd have a go. Um, so I would recommend to you that you either are non-selling and see how it goes, and then the following year you'll know, you know, or you could be um, an organisational membership as an amateur art group and a group. So, uh, so then, so that's your membership, and then you still need a group listing, um, and everybody exhibits three pieces because that's how we're set up to work for sort of big amateur art groups. Right. We can't um some of the members because only some of the members must might want to sell, but not all of us. Well, perhaps when a little bit like we said to be, the way to think about it is who thinks they want to sell their work. So have a non-selling exhibition, and then anybody who's going to sell their work thinks about having a a, a solo listing alongside. So it might be working out who wants to sell, who doesn't want okay. to sell, and is there a combination? Um, and if it's not quite clear, come back to us because these are the ones where it you know can be a bit trickier to work yeah. to see your way through it. Okay, as I say, because I don't think you know if, if all eleven of us have got paid twenty seven fifty, we may not actually get the people wanting to to um, carry on with this then. As well no, as right. I mean, ninety nine, because that's a lot for um, amateurs who are literally just going to show three pieces of work. Yeah. It's quite and a lot. that's why that we have the options for the non selling and yeah. for the amateur, and obviously that you could do a combination of okay. a selling artist and a non selling group right okay that's really fine. enthusiastic fine thank you i have a question okay yeah hi so um uh on um, the you you talked in the tips and pointers you mentioned um that it was important to choose a strong image for the guy yes it was that strong image like uh, one of our let's say a painting or or of ourselves uh what yeah. type of are you referring right, to? So I'd recommend that you have a look at last year's guide, um, which I put the link in to the chat so that you can do that afterwards. It's a piece of your work. Okay. Or a piece of, uh, or if it's a group, then sometimes people do um, amalgamations of a couple of pieces or, but really it's probably your most striking painting or it could be a detail. It doesn't have to be the whole painting. If your paintings are I don't know, super detailed and they're not going to come up, you could do a detail or... Um, but basically, the strongest photo you've got is if you'd use it on a flyer to say, come and have a look at my my art. OK. And Thanks. it's best to be square. The reason it's best to be square is because in the, the way the festival guide is, is the kind of the design of the page. We don't know whether you're going to have a, a landscape or a portrait. So there's a square and it can be either. But if you go square, you get all of it. OK. I think you'll see what I mean if you have a look at the pages. Great. Thanks. Any other questions? Gosh, there's oh, Caroline. Caroline? Uh, yeah, um, I was just wondering for, for people who do solo exhibitions, what sort of number of works do they tend to exhibit? Um, it's probably another how long is a piece of string type question, but do you have a feel for that at all? Um, some people normally it could be anything from a dozen to maybe 30 or 40 depends yeah. how big your space mm -hmm. is as much as anything um, that was exactly what i was going to say 12 right. 12 up really but there will be the occasional person who'll just have a the thing that they're working on and um the thing that they're working on and prints or sketchbooks or mm -hmm. And they actually want to talk or they want to talk about how the kiln works. And so you do get your 15 words, 15 words ish in the festival guide as well. And so you can say, you know, working studio, come and see the process. Or you could say 
you know, two rooms of, or so, yeah, so you can use the text as well to give people that bit of flavour. Um, yes, I'm afraid the venue does need to be confirmed by the 31st of December. And that's because on the 2nd of January, Joe and I have a giant map of Oxfordshire and a lot of coloured stickers. And we then work out the numbering of the venues. And once those venues are numbered and put onto pages, we can't squeeze somebody in, even if they're your next door neighbour. We can't then squeeze them into the gaps. Yeah, so because we do it geographically as if you were maybe driving around an area or walking down a street um, as much as we can. So it really is impossible to slot anything in or to change where you are. Any other questions? Hi. Hi. Um, how how do you get in touch with other artists, other solo artists? Because I, I want to exhibit on my own. So um, if they're, because if, I'm based in Abingdon, so if there are other artists in Abingdon that I, I could potentially get together with um, for, for a particularly nice venue, how, how do I get in touch with those? Right, so when you say you're a solo artist, you mean you, you don't want to exhibit as a solo artist, no, you expect no. to be part of a group. Yes. Well, the best place to start is to find a venue map because yeah. you'll see if there are other solo artists there. Um, you can also get hold of the festival guide from last year and have a look if there are groups and things. Now, Peachcroft is usually a big venue, but they're not going to be there this year. But there are a few other venues nearby. Um, I would just try and, you know, try and put your feelers out, really, about if there are other artists, either, either put something out locally or use our map and... I can we can also keep our ears to the ground if there are other Abingdon artists and but that map is our if you like our kind of starting point so we will watch and it's early days at the moment so we will watch over the next month or two names come in yeah um, okay. I mean again that's why I'm partly thinking as well think how far you might travel to be part of a group um you know we've got a couple of venues we know might be host groups but we don't know yet okay. so Okay, right. Thank you. One, one final question. Yeah, of course. Um, hopefully, I'm not expecting to sell anything, but hopefully, I might be able to. But would you advise to have maybe a little bit of stock and people take them away on the day, or how how, how does that work? Would, would okay. You, would, would this you... is kind of the so in February, beginning of February, we run a series of workshops very like this, in which we'll actually talk about these sorts of things. You know, do you want to have cards and postcards that people can take if they can't afford a painting but if you do then that's going to cost you money to put into that in the first place so you know again what are you trying to get out of it are you trying to make a profit or are you trying to give everybody something to take away and we would generally say if you've got 12 pictures up ask people to come back um at the end of the week to collect it so that anybody else coming through in that week sees your whole range because if everybody if people buy things and you've only got one left by the last sunday that's going to be very disappointing for anyone who comes on the sunday but then yep. if somebody's passing through when they live in kendall then let them take it so i mean generally it's quite a pragmatic approach but we'll we try and give you at least again things to think about about all those kinds of things in february and it will be a zoom thing and then hopefully it will go online afterwards um so that anybody who couldn't make the date can watch it watch it later okay. cool thank you Brilliant. but we do try and as much as we can kind of lay out all these sorts of things you might want to think about it through from january through to the may okay fantastic thank you any others feel free to just jump in yes you're going to need to unmute i think yeah, okay um, so there, there's probably a nine or ten which will be in our group. Is it possible for any of the other members to join the Zoom next time? Or would you prefer just one person from the group? No, everybody everybody could, could can join. Okay, that's fine. That'd be so, great. So when you're dealing with, you know, art weeks, I say art weeks, it sounds big. It's mostly, it's really, it's Joe and me. Um, but there are local area volunteer coordinators as well, who you might come across, well, you would come across probably next year if you take part. But there's really, there's Joe and me in kind of central art weeks. Okay. And um, although there might be 10 of you in a venue, 
So we know we've got 400 venues or 500 venues in May. We also know that there's a thousand artists and wow. every single person within each group can contact us directly and has the same newsletters and the same online portfolio. So we treat all members the same, mm -hmm. however you're subdivided within those exhibitions. Okay, thank you. I had another question. Okay. On the um on the marketing materials, you said that there were art week signs and and do you do you provide those? Can we purchase them from you or so what we have are so we do posters and things which are you know paper posters and there's they're free, they come, you know, you get those and they're also available as a PDF to print off yourself. But we have artists we have Art Week's flags and bunting. Now, the flags are about 60 by 80 centimetres, so they're quite sizable, and they're quite sturdy PVC. And those, the idea is that you, you reuse them, and we see some that, are, well, we see some that are the previous branding. So I don't know how many years ago that was. That's like 18, 20 years ago, flapping around the county in May sometimes. So the idea is that they last. So we ask you to, so you buy those, um, and the bunting is the same. We charge cost price for them we're not trying to make a profit um so they're about 24 pounds that's 24 pounds for flag or 24 pounds for bunting and you can have one you can have both we also do sort of directional signs the ones that look a little bit like um aa signs they are i think they're eight pounds each they're actually quite expensive but they're good um but you can actually do you, you can you know you can make your own signage any way you like you don't have to use our signage I think most people do because it saves time and energy. People recognize it and it's quite efficient. Um, but you don't need to use our signage. OK, great. Thanks. Anyone else? Oh, Nicola. Hi, yeah. Um, thank you. That's I was just having a little look to see about the finding a venue um, on the website and so it sent me to kind of like filling in a form, which I've just done. But then I, I don't know, I'm perhaps not looking in the right place at all to just see actually where the map is. It was, um, it was I need to OK it first off. to just check you weren't spam. Um, and oh. then you'll be it will show up on the map. So oh, if okay. any of you put yourself on the venue map, it could be a couple of days before you show up. But we'll do it, get there as soon as we possibly can to just oh. we have to approve it. Um, oh, brilliant. And just then I'll the, go... the way our IT works, um, and then you'll show up on the map. We oh. usually try and do it pretty quickly, but we say 48 or 72 hours just in case it's oh, you know, Friday afternoon through to Monday morning or one of us is falling off our bike and having our leg put in plaster cast or something. So, <laughs> you're not. <laughs> um, okay, so what would then, then be a link for me? Because I can't actually find any of the venues so is that right at the moment there's probably only two or three venues on there because we're still quite early in the season and we did, so what i would say is even if you get to like we I haven't got any on there the at all at the moment oh there's no venues at the moment okay even if we get towards the end of november we will suddenly get this kind of mad flurry of people <laughs> gnashing of teeth wailing and and then we'll get venues coming in sometimes halfway through December you know saying oh oh please help us find some artists so there will be venues that that come um but but don't be shy as well of of you know kind of if you if you, you've got an idea of where you want to be you can email us too because there are places like I mean I don't know what the Earth Trust are doing this year and whether they're going but they usually can if you're you know for people down in the Wallingford way who are doing kind of natural history related art quite often they'll absorb a couple of other people so we sometimes can say oh you're there you could try this. So it is worth oh. emailing in us, us too. But don't so, rely on that because you can imagine how many emails we get and we can't, not everyone is an obvious... Match everybody. So that's yeah. why the, the um, map... I've now okayed you on the map. So you are okay. on the map. Um, but certainly, you know, if you think of a venue yourself but it's too big for you, do try approaching other artists that are on there as well. See if somebody else wants to okay. join so up. Will it, so will it show... Because I'm in Bista then. So Ah, oh, um, Bista. Right, okay. Email us, email me or Joe, Esther at artweeks.org or Joe at artweeks.org. Vista has a really vibrant Vista Arts Network. We'll put you in touch with we'll the put coordinator you in touch with and, and oh, okay, help. brilliant. Do you know Graham Perryman? No. Okay, well you will. 
Okay. So we'll put you in touch with, so that's why, again, some areas we know that there'll be somebody who, who's who got a big group or who's really good at doing that coordination. Okay, great, brilliant. Thank you very much, both of you. Thank you. Can you put the website up again for the map? Uh, no rush. Esther? Yes, I'm just trying to find the link to copy and paste. Oh, thank you. <laughs> it was much oh someone's just done it quicker than me thank you um yes it's a slightly clunky way because you have to go into a page and then go into the map page from it whereas we'd like it all on one page but the the web system doesn't like it so it's slightly clunkier than we would like um but that's the page to keep your eyes on but really it's probably not going to solve most of yours ven venue um, it, it will only help some people so it is quite good to to go out there and think about what can work and you also sometimes find if you go into a, an architect's office and say have you got a spare room I could use for art weeks and you'll get some extra footfall and they say oh yeah we've got some people who draw some you know Jerry does cartoons and Pam's really great with abstracts and then other people come out of the woodwork and you get a little group that way and in fact we found that with sometimes an employer will say oh yeah we don't mind that we'll have it and it will be and they'll put it out in their newsletter to their 50 employees and get quite a nice bunch of friends and family of employees. So that can work quite well too. Okay, I don't see any more little hands. So any other thoughts? In which case, I think we're wrapping up. So if you phone the Art Week's office for any reason, then you will get Joe. Get me. Um, but you can, so you can email, in fact, if you email straight into the website, you'll get Joe too, but you can yeah. email me as well, because I'm Esther at Art Weeks, Esther, well, you can see my name, Esther at artweeks.org, and Joe's Joe at artweeks.org. But the contact form goes to Joe, and we both, we're in touch all the time, and everything goes back and forth. So um, do feel that we're approachable, and that you can just ask, or say, you know, or, you know, either, you know, I've got these three images and I don't know which to choose for the festival guide. Which do you think? So little queries are, are fine. So we we try and be helpful. We we try and be on hand. Yeah. If you want a hand with any information that's needed for the entry forms or anything for registering, just drop us a line and we'll get in touch. It's not a problem. And so, Caroline, I can say you're not sure whether you're going to take the plunge. Well, mm -hmm. what I can say, and this, this does sound like a big plug, and I'm not trying to, it's, People who do it almost always seem really, really, really pleased that they've taken the plunge. I put—I don't know where you got the information about today and why you're here, but I put something, a reminder on face, the Facebook group in the last few days. And, you know, someone had put underneath about if you're thinking about it, then do, because it's the best thing. I you know I really, you know, really, really pleased I have. And we hear it mm -hmm. such a lot. And that's not down to Joe and I. I mean, I'd love to say it was, but it's about. I'm the, sure it is. <laughs> but obviously it's quite a lot to do with it, <laughs> but mostly it's to do with the focus and then feeling so pleased because people are liking their art and all they mm. or they're learning about the direction to take it so um i mean it depends what you do and what yeah. you but, but 50 percent of me would love to and 50 percent of me is a bit scared so yeah we'll, we'll have you know, to see maybe, which one wins <laughs> maybe it groups the way to do it yeah it might well be yeah yeah and mm. i also i shouldn't tell you this but we do get a real flurry at about 10 o'clock on the 31st of December. Where people, yeah. <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm sure. And whether they've had two glasses of wine and they decide to, or whether they just, it's like, right, I've got to do it. My New Year's resolution, mm. I'm going to start now. But um, yeah, well, I mean, we, we try and welcome everyone. We try and help everyone. And generally it seems to work for most people. Fantastic. Well, thank you ever so much for taking your hour out of your evening to come. Um, we really appreciate it because it, it's also nice to see the little faces, the little names, and then, you know, see you again in January and think, oh, yeah. So, and do keep in touch from now. Do feel free to sort of drop us a line, tell us your website, tell us a little bit more about you so that we are then better placed to think, ah, oh, this person might fit with that group or or so on. Or, you know, yes, if you're in Bista, that's an easy one. We can put you in touch. Um, with this may be a bit of a big one, but before you go, um, you can exhibit in more than one region. So if you wanted to be in the yes. south and yes, then in true. the north or 
in the city, you can do more than one exhibition, but that may be a little bit too much for anybody for new doing it session for the first time. yeah thank you okay well in which case hopefully i'll see you know some of you next year That and would be lovely. um, we'll be in touch in the meantime Thank you. thank Bye. you Thank Thanks you very very much. much. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you, Esther. Thank My pleasure. you. Thank you.